Nothing makes all your hard work more frustrating on a lawn than a crappy lawnmower. <laughs> I am so pissed off at my ego. I have two egos. And mistakenly, when I was away, I had to order one for John because the other old, our old one break. And I ordered this one, not realizing that it was the lower power single blade ego. Piece of crap. I mean, it'll barely cut any kind of thick grass whatsoever. Victim in the lawn care series. <laughs> no comments about the hot teenager. Cute, who's the cute girl doc? It's my friend's dog. Lily's out here working. Her mom went back to work full time. Um, with the uh, with the nursery business, they called her back, and she's been with me all summer. The short version of the story is Lily's going to Georgia Southern in a few months, probably in December. And she said, hey, she needs work, she needs money because she's got to get an apartment down there. I said, send her out. As long as she's willing to do shit work, I'm happy with it. So all the crap that needs to be done around here that I don't have time to do, she's doing. I don't care if it's washing cars, cutting grass, working chickens, working the vegetable gardens, she's doing it. She's making good money. And hopefully I can help her out to the point where she has enough when she gets down there She's all set. So today we're gonna to talk about the fall, fast release nitrogen, why it plays such an important role. And a lot of people think it's just for the upper portion of the grass and it's not. Nitrogen plays a key role in root development. People don't understand. When it comes to grass, nitrogen is extremely important in root development, in cell replication, in storing carbohydrates for the winter, Pretty much you're at the end of the season. Don't try and fix your soil. It's just a little light nitrogen, light nitrogen, light nitrogen, light nitrogen. Warm season. We're in a horrible drought and I'll talk about that in a minute. I'm doing nothing but irrigating every day, everything on this property. But we're still in the eight, it's hot as heck in the afternoon. I mean, we're 82 to almost 90 degrees. The grass is growing, it looks great. So yes, light nitrogen, light nitrogen, that's it. That's all you're gonna do. Warm season, at some point, you're just gonna shut it off when your temps drops down cold. But you cool season guys, or your overseeding guys, this is where we're gonna put down, we wanna focus on nitrogen, and I'm putting down DGL. Now, I was putting down uh, Lawn Alive, I was spraying Lawn Alive, and that has really helped this. It's out of stock, it's been out of stock for almost three weeks. So, they're supposedly doing a production run, hopefully it'll be available, because if you got new seed, Lawn Alive is perfect for it. I'll also talk about the myths about winterizers and uh, seed starter fertilizers, which I do not like. Man, that's looking great. So what's interesting here is I've got common Bermuda mixed in with perennial rye from a year and a half ago. That's the problem with using perennial rye as an overseed. But, man, look at that. That looks just awesome. Okay, so let me get a little bit nerdy here for a minute and let me read from some studies. I put these studies on the page below and you can go ahead and look at them or look up yourself. I'm going to grab one paragraph that really kind of explains that this is not just, nitrogen is not just above the ground, green growth. The key findings from this study, fall nitrogen at a moderate rate significantly increased, increased root mass up to 25% more than the untreated plots. Carbohydrate storage, fall color retention, without excessive top growth. top growth. Higher rates led to minor leaching risk, but still boosted the overall health metrics like um, photosynthesis efficiency. Plants with fall nitrogen showed 15 to 20% better winter survival and earlier spring vigor. Okay, now let's talk about, you're gonna see a lot of people say you need to get a fertilizer with high phosphorus. I disagree with that. And here's a good example. I think this is from the University of Oregon. At baseline soil phosphorus levels, excess phosphorus application showed no significant increase in root length, mass, or depth compared to unfertilized controls. Root biomass remained stable across the treatments. High phosphorus rates elevated soil test phosphorus by 50 to 100% 
but did not enhance the root architecture or drought tolerance. So that's just a little bit of scientific research. There's a ton of it out there. So understand, if you have a cool season lawn, your, your, your fall nitrogen, you want to get it into the soil as fast as possible because it's really effective on the roots. That's why we're going to use a fast release nitrogen. We're going to use a nitrogen, we're going to use a fertilizer that has micronized particles. I can't stress that enough. So much of fast release nitrogen is this big marble type fertilizer and it's horrible as far as particle distribution. So if you take a square foot of lawn, you may have five, six, seven, eight particles on that one square foot. That's not going to get nitrogen to all those plants. If you take something like DGL, dark green lawn, or even a green shocker, which is micronized, you'll have anywhere from, I would say, 50 to 200 particles on that one square foot based on which one you use. You want to get it into the soil now, and that's why I prefer, instead of going out and putting out a slow-release fertilizer that's going to slowly feed over the next six to eight weeks, that's not what you want right now. You want something in really fast, all fast release. Green shocker is an instant release. It turns into liquid as soon as you wet it. Green shocker takes um, probably one or two irrigation cycles before it gets in. And that's what I'm putting out here now. I'm putting out dark green lawn, DGL. It works really well. So anyways, uh, I'll just put together some footage for what I've been shooting the past few days. I will tell you that we have been battling a absolutely severe drought out here. I mean, bad. It has not rained in three weeks and I have been a slave to my irrigation systems out here. I am so tired of dragging hoses, running pumps. <laughs> it's just crazy. I have to go up and water these fields pretty much every single day. And that's a two hour run up in the irrigation. These, the lawns, I have to order them just about every single day. I'm dragging hoses, watering flower gardens. Uh, we need it, and thank God, it looks like in about four or five days, we're finally going to get some rain. I've got so many, I've got so many jalapenos out here that they're just going bad. So I texted a neighbor, and actually, you know what? Your your mom will probably want some of these. We got probably have so many of them. Good Lord, look at this. I mean, that's already what 50, 60. Good gracious. So this. That's the ripe jalapenos. Those look great. And then these are the overripened ones. And I think I just texted your mom and I said I'm sending home. I'm gonna send all the overripe ones home to her because okay. she likes to make weird stuff like jellies and cowboy candy. What is it? Cowboy candy? Is yeah, that what it is? Yeah, I don't like it though. Yeah. And then uh, man, but those I got neighbors all around that want those. So. So let me give you a little tip on Ego Lawn Mowers. This thing is not a good one. <laughs> this lawn mower has a lower horsepower than our other Ego. We have another Ego that we use for the gardens. If I take this Ego up to the gardens and try and cut all those weeds and that, it won't do it. It just won't do it. That other one has a lot more horsepower. I mean, a lot more horsepower. So. All egos are not built the same. I'm just going to, if you're, they're both 21 inch, they both run the same batteries, but they are completely two different mowers. All right, so I'm still seeing little brown stuff on top and that's that dead clippings. So you can see here, I mean, there's a lot of this dead brown. So I'm actually gonna throw the bag on there and pick most of that up. So much better. This is a horribly bumpy lawn. <laughs> and that's why doing this diagonal one way the, the one time, diagonal the next, it makes it look so much cleaner and so much crisper.
So I mentioned to you guys that we do fall overseedings, winter fall, winter overseedings here. And I want to explain, see, see this, can you see this like lime green sort of patchy area over here? That's perennial rye from a year and a half ago or almost two years ago. And then from here over, it's all this common Bermuda. All that brown is dead clippings. And you can see it over here. So I've got Bermuda, patchy rye. <laughs> so I've decided for the back, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to get a fine blade perennial rye overseed here. The rest of this whole property is probably gonna get some type of like contractor mix that will have some fescues, perennials, and uh, annual rye is probably what I'll do. Or just buy some cheap annual rye grass for the back areas. But I gotta wait for rain. There's no reason to do it now. I probably won't do it till October, to be honest. I mean, we're still get to getting up close to 90 degrees and dry. No reason to waste money on seed. Tell you what, nothing makes all your hard work more frustrating on a lawn than a crappy lawnmower. <laughs> I am so pissed off at my ego. I have two egos. And mistakenly, when I was away, I had to order one for John because the other old our old one break. And I ordered this one, not realizing that it was the lower power single blade ego. Piece of crap. I mean It'll barely cut any kind of thick grass whatsoever. We can't take it up to the garden to cut those weeds or whatever we do in clover. It'll just stall out. The other one we have is a beast. It is twice as powerful. <laughs> it has a double blade versus a single blade. And the guys actually, when they cut the pond, they'll go up to the garden, they'll get that one and bring it back down. So anyways, uh, Lily cut this yesterday. And when she cut it, there was a whole bunch of clippings on top and they turned brown and it looked ugly. So she cut it this way. And so today I decided to cut it this way with the bag on it. And man, it just looks, it just looks so nice when you finally just get something. This is not about, this has something to do with the DGL, the nitrogen, but this really has to do with a combination of the mycorrhizal fungi and lawn alive and bacteria that we've been putting down on this. And then light coats of nitrogen and then water, water, water. Early in the morning, I'm watering this at 5.30 in the morning. And then usually late in the afternoon, like two or three, I'm hitting it again. And I have free water, I can do that. I can do that because it runs off my shallow well. But yeah, I mean, it's looking great. Oh, but that, even that, it, does, it struggles, that ego struggles to even pick up the clippings. This is, this grass is just so thick, the clippings settle down in, but um, I'll tell you what, man. That looks great. So the plan, the plan, Stan, is to come out here probably in October when we start to get temperatures never touching the 80s, like high 70s. And we're going to scalp this down really hard. We'll probably take real mower, we'll scalp it, pick up all those clippings, and we'll come out with that really, really fine uh, perennial rye. The pond front, we will scalp down. Um, we will plant some kind of more basic rye or contractor mix. Same over there, over here, and over here. Either some type of annual rye or contractor mix. But I don't think you can understand just how thick this sponge. is. Sponge. This is crazy. This is so thick. And that's cheap common Bermuda. <sighs> All right, well, I'm gonna run the irrigation on it since I just cut it. But yeah, I'm gonna order. I'm tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell Rachel to sell that one on Facebook Marketplace. I'll split the money with her and I'm gonna go buy another one. I'm so tired of dealing with that, that lawnmower. Mm -hmm.